You're one mile from ground zero. Close enough to see the flash. Close enough to feel the air ripple. Close enough that, statistically, you're a future shadow burnt onto a wall. But you're not a statistic. Not yet. You're a soon-to-be crispy human who still, miraculously, has a chance. Because one mile is hell, but it's not automatic death. It's survivable. If you do everything exactly right and panic about half as much as your brain wants to. First thing you need to understand. Nuclear blasts don't kill you all at once. They try three separate times. Like a politely scheduled apocalypse. There's the flash. Then the wave. Then the fallout. Heaven, hell, and overtime. And since you're still watching this video instead of being vaporized, we're going to assume you're either terrifyingly lucky or extremely bad at choosing real estate. Either way, we're going to walk you through how to live through the next several minutes, hours, and days. Spoiler, it's going to hurt, and it's going to be ugly. But ugly is still alive. Step 1. The Flash, the light that hates you. A one-mile detonation means the flash reaches you before you have time to swear. It's brighter than the sun and hotter than anything you've ever experienced. Think, instant barbecue but you're the ribs. If you see the flash, don't look at it. Not for a second. If you're staring out a window, you're basically letting the sun punch your eyes straight through your skull. The flash can blind you temporarily or permanently, cooking your retinas like overconfident eggs. So here's what you do the moment you notice the horizon turning into a second sunrise. Drop. Turn. Cover. Drop to the ground immediately. Turn your body away from the flash. Cover your head with your arms and whatever you're wearing, shirt, jacket, someone else's jacket, doesn't matter. Shield any exposed skin. The flash only lasts a second, but that second can peel you like a fruit. If you're outside with no cover, your priority is to become as small and as shielded as possible. Curl up behind a concrete barrier, a ditch, a car engine block. Not the car doors, they're worthless. Glass melts, metal cooks, and your skin goes with it. If you're indoors, even better, just get away from windows. A nuclear flash turns glass into high-velocity shrapnel faster than you can say. This sucks. Step 2. The blast wave, the part that tries to fold you. The flash comes first. The shock wave comes next. And at one mile, it's coming in fast. This is the part that lifts buildings, tosses cars, and turns street signs into guillotines. You're already on the ground, good. Stay there. Prone position. Feet toward the blast, not your head. Why? Because your legs can take more abuse than your skull. Also, your shoes make decent shrapnel shields. Then brace. The shockwave hits at hundreds of miles per hour. It will try to roll you, slam you, and sandblast your face with whatever's airborne at the moment. Dirt, stones, pieces of your neighbor's porch. If you're inside, get behind something solid and low. A heavy desk, a load-bearing wall, a bathtub. Not near windows, not in hallways, and definitely not next to anything tall and fragile. The wave turns furniture into landmines. When it hits, it'll be loud. Gunshot loud. Thunder in your bones loud. Don't sit up until the second wave passes. Yes, there are multiple waves. Think of them as a nuclear encore. If you're still breathing after this part, congratulations. You've just survived the second death. Now comes the slow one. Step 3. The fallout. The sky is now trying to poison you. Fallout is not ash. Not snow. Not dust. Fallout is microscopic death confetti. Radioactive particles dropped into the atmosphere, drifting down to decorate the landscape indefinitely not safe. If you can see it falling, you're already in trouble. If you can breathe it, you're worse off. If you stand around admiring it because you think it looks like dirty snow, you're dead. You now have 10 to 20 minutes before fallout becomes lethally radioactive in your area. That's how long it takes to drift down. That means you need to be somewhere safe before the sky starts shedding poison glitter. Find shelter. Real shelter. Here's what qualifies. A basement. A concrete parking garage. A subway tunnel. The interior of a large building, not near windows. Anything underground. Here's what does not qualify. Your car. A tent. A shed. A garage door made of aluminum and wishful thinking. Outside, where the murder snow is falling. You want as much mass between you and the outside world as possible. Dirt, concrete, books, water, anything dense. Height is your enemy. Deep is your friend. Step 4. Seal yourself in and stay put. Once you're inside, close every door, window, vent, and gap possible. Fallout dust is tiny. It'll get in anywhere air can get in. You're making a cocoon now. 
a radioactive bunker burrito. Tape up the cracks with duct tape, towels, blankets, whatever you have. Turn off HVAC systems. They pull in outside air. Now check yourself. Strip off your outer clothing. It can remove up to 90% of the radioactive dust you picked up. Yes, strip. Modesty is for people not being microwaved. Put the clothes in a sealed bag, bucket, or airtight container. Shower if you can. Not a bath that soaks fallout deeper into your skin. Use soap. Gently. Shampoo your hair but skip conditioner. It sticks to radioactive particles like glue. If you can't shower, wipe yourself down with wet cloths. Pay special attention to your hair, face, and hands. Do not scrub hard. Broken skin absorbs radiation faster, and you've suffered enough today. Step 5. The first 24 hours, don't go outside. No matter what. This is the deadly period. Fallout loses intensity quickly, but the first day is brutal. The radiation level drops by 50% every hour for the first few hours, and about 90% after 24 hours. If you go outside just to check, congratulations, you've inhaled enough particles to glow in the dark. Stay inside. Stay low. Stay bored. Hydrate. Eat. Drink. Rest. You're in survival mode now, not adventure mode. Step 6. The first 48 hours. Think but don't move yet. After 48 hours, radiation levels outside are much lower, but still dangerous. If your shelter is stable, stay longer. If it's damaged, exposed, or uncomfortable, you may need to move, but only if it's absolutely necessary. You want to plan your escape like you're sneaking past death itself, because you are. Best time to move, after 48 to 72 hours. But even then, wear a mask or improvised face covering. Wear long sleeves and long pants. Avoid disturbing dust. Stick to clean surfaces, concrete dirt. Don't touch vegetation. It collects fallout like Velcro. Find better shelter, cleaner food, safer water. Speaking of water, let's talk about that. Step 7. Water, food, and not dying of thirst. Radiation doesn't magically contaminate everything. Fallout settles on surfaces. If your water was covered, sealed, underground, or stored indoors, it's safe. Tap water. Usually safe, it's underground pipes feeding it. Open lakes or ponds. Avoid them unless you filter, boil, and pray. Food inside sealed containers is fine. Canned food is your new best friend. Anything exposed to the air outdoors is a radioactive seasoning blend you don't want. Your priority for the first few days. Hydration and staying sheltered. Step 8. Watch for radiation sickness. If you get symptoms fast, that's bad. Symptoms include nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, headache, weakness, skin reddening. If these happen within hours of the blast, you took a heavy dose. Doesn't mean you're dead, but it means the next few days are going to be a fight. Rest. Hydrate. Stay as clean as possible. Minimize exposure. Your body is trying to rebuild damaged cells faster than radiation can kill them. Help it. Step 9. The why behind all this. Why does any of this work? Because radiation isn't magic. It follows rules. Mass blocks it. Time weakens it. Distance protects you. The flash burns you. The blast breaks you. The fallout poisons you. But none of these things are unbeatable. People survived Hiroshima a mile from ground zero. People walked away from nuclear tests by accident. Humans are surprisingly hard to kill when they're stubborn enough. You have one job, outstubborn the apocalypse. Step 10, the punchline. You survived the flash. You survived the wave. You avoided the poison confetti. You're still breathing. And breathing is half of surviving anything. If your skin stays intact, your symptoms stay mild, and your shelter holds, you've done what most people can't even imagine. You lived through a nuclear blast at one mile. If you see the sky clear, the air still, and your body still moving, then congratulations. You're not done. Not even close. But you're alive. And in a world like this, alive is a damn miracle.